the pops. Hello, everybody. Tell them what you're up to. Well, I run across a couple of white oak logs that had been down dead probably, I guess, better part of 20 years. And uh, my cousin across a hill here, he brought them to me. They were down on his property up there. We didn't, we wasn't sure. They were pretty rotten. They were rotten three, about three inches or so. And we were not sure what they were till we got to sawing them and it turned out that they are wormy white oak. So they were rotten about is, three inches in from the which, outside. Which is a, a, a white oak. Uh, it had been down long enough to where the worms started eating on it. And this morning I sawed me some secondary wood for the shelves and the, the back and stuff like that because I don't want to, I just want to use my white oak where, uh, where it can be seen for the facing and the sides and stuff and the doors. The rest of it will be what they call a secondary wood. And that's something that's been done since furniture. I guess since furniture has been being made, they kept the best wood for, the, for what is vi visible and then used a secondary wood like pine or poplar. Uh, for what's not seen for the drawers and uh, the inside and the shelves and stuff. But poplar is a good wood and poplar can be stained. The grain's really tight and it, you can tell by this, it's really white. And uh, sometimes you can, uh, you can stain poplar to look like any kind of wood you want to because the, right, the grain is virtually not virtually invisible. And then some of the poplar, you get some really colorful poplar. Some they call rainbow poplar. I've heard it called peacock poplar. And uh, I've seen it green, purple, red. I've seen it by about every color of the rainbow, which it is a beautiful wood. All right, we're going to the barn and put this in the barn. Patty wants to show you the, the wormy white oak. Yes, I do. I want to show you this wood that has uh, tripped its trigger. <laughs> There's like, you know, 50 gazillion um, projects on for this winter. Everything from finishing the base, finish cleaning the basement. That's, that's kind of my big job. I want to get that done. And also building my grow room. My grow room is where I'll be growing my, my plants this year. And, um, I've had several other people ask me if I would grow for them. I'm happy to because I love, I love growing the little plants from seedlings. So that makes me happy, or from seeds. Growing the little seedlings from seeds. So that makes me very happy to do that. And um, hopefully as of this spring, I will have a designated room in the downstairs with plenty of shelves, plenty of lights, and, and a, a heat source all its own so that um so that i can grow without worrying about um, heat fluctuations and this past year if you remember i i grew everything on the front porch that's glassed in it got nice and warm during the day it still had to be heated at night but um it was it was a very successful place to grow but I will be happy to have it, it, but it really got too hot in the spring to grow for, you know, the later, the, the plants that I wanted to set out later. So that's the thing. I really want to have just a closed in environment where I can grow any time of the year. I can grow plants to set out late summer for autumn and fall. I can grow uh, to set out early early spring or later in the spring and just um, adjust my heat to suit whatever plants I'm growing but that's the idea all right takes me a little longer to get down here he offered to have me drive the tractor he said why don't you just drive the tractor on dozen 
no, I'm going to do a video so I can talk to my girls and guys. So, he probably, I bet that man, I bet he tracks 10 miles a day. He, he does a lot of riding on the lawn, on, on the tractor when he's um, moving stuff around, but he also puts in a whole lot of miles on foot. But uh, I guess that's one of the things that has kept his blood sugars under control for all these years. He's diabetic, and he has been diabetic since we found out he was diabetic when he was 40 years old. So for 23 years, his um, blood sugars have been controlled just simply, simply through um, a couple medications and we were very good at keeping things under control through our eating habits too those kind of fell by the wayside but we're doing a little better we're doing a little better now but uh he's just a busy butt all right i know y'all have been in this barn if you watch aaron's channel I see some, I see some girls back there. Don't do huh? What's wrong? Huh? What's wrong? Don't shut lock the gate. I'm coming. Oh, I didn't realize There's you were no coming. There's over there anyhow. They're over yonder. Okay. There's the girls back there. There's Harry's hay beller. Back there's the, the stalks for putting them in. What's your groundhog hole up here in the shade? I am. These, oh, I see that. Oh my gosh, look at that. There's a freshly dug groundhog hole. It's a caved in groundhog hole. It's a caved in groundhog hole. That's what I said. We've got to, uh, <laughs> we've got to get some serious work done on this barn. This barn is 100 years old this year. It was built in 1923 and, uh, We've got to get some foundation work done on it. A hundred years of freezing and thawing and water. He's got to go out and pet his girls. Hey, Willow. The black faced one is Willow. Hi, darling. You just checking on them? Look at these babies. Yeah, they're all here. Look at all these and babies. They look good. Hugh just built the the fence or the gate a week or two back because is that Samson? That's Samson. Hey, Bud, Bud. Right there, Samson. Oh, right there, Samson. I see that. <laughs> How could I have missed that? And is this Ruby Lee, or is that's this Ruby Lee? Okay, yeah, that's Ruby Lee. I get Ruby Lee and Mama Bill, the other all black one well, mixed Mama up. Mama Bill is the only one we have. It's got tags in the ear. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I can remember that. Hey, girls. And uh, the other white-faced mamas, one is Rosebud and one is Artemis. So we have Samson, Ruby Lee. Behind Samson is Mama Bill. This white face one right there is Rosebud. This is Willow. And the other white face one is behind Willow, and her name is Artemis. And the babies, Chelsea named them, but I don't remember their names just yet. So, anyway. But the reason farmers hate groundhog holes is ground this was not visible until... Uh, I had a little bull calf I wanted to mend, and uh, so we had them in here to separate them, and that caved in under their feet. That's called a so broken leg. So out in the pasture, we're well blessed with groundhogs, and we've been trying to eradicate them all my life, and we've never had any success. But but uh, I've, I've cow step on a 
a groundhog hole because most of the time they're just right under the surface for a pretty good area and they step on one that caves in they could stumble and fall and break their leg yeah and besides they turn over tractors groundhogs we've seen that happen one time yeah we've had a number of people in the valley over the years get killed i turned this hay baler over on a, because of a groundhog hole yeah and that's just been this year so i mean we've had it's hard it's hard because groundhogs are so cute and for me you know me being the consummate animal lover it hurts my heart to think of them being eradicated as he calls it but uh, it's a matter of life and death in an area like this all right here we go I know y'all have been up here there's a little bit of everything I call it uh, <laughs> redneck storage and it is it's also Huey's woodworking area back there in the back is everything from empty boxes to Jared's things to what's left of my mom's things that my brothers and sisters haven't came after to canning supplies and he has car parts in here oh and over here are Chelsea's doors yay <laughs> those will be going in when he has some big boy help so that'll mean Aaron and Jared or Aaron and Aiden both will have to be home because didn't you say <laughs> didn't you say they weighed about 100 pounds each they're a solid two by six open doors yeah those are some heavy heavy duty doors all right pops let's see this this wormy oak all right let's go around here and look at this you want it in the sun or you want it out of the sun probably out of the sun let's try it both ways this is some i glued up and you can see the wormy the wormy spots on it and i didn't take any time to to match the wood i just however it went together when i was gluing it up because my little mill won't saw but a six inch board and by the time you get it finished a lot of times they're five inches well i actually i actually for an old farmhouse anyway i like that look because it reminds me of what they always called marriage wood remember it is this is out of the same tree but this is more toward the outside where it was rotten you can see the water marks like this right here that's on the outside this right here was was starting to rot but i think it just gives it character mm -hmm, I do too. I think and it's we beautiful. possibly will use some antique oak stain or something on it and then we may not put anything on it that's up to patty to decide the look she wants for well just i want to lighten the kitchen up since we're doing this it'd be nice just to lighten the kitchen up as much as possible but you can see you can see the wormy where the worms were eating on it. These logs probably would not have lasted another couple of years. And this one he hasn't... Um, I haven't finished that ground one ...ground down yet. Planed, I guess that's the word. <laughs> well, it's been planed, but then I glued it up. And yep. I need to get it down to a manageable width and plane it again because this is still an inch thick. Now I'm looking for a... I'm looking for a finished product about three quarters thick. Mm -hmm. and the and the poplar will be used for what you don't see it's going to be used for like the shells in the bottom and but this such is, as that this is still the wormy oak though right this is oak yeah okay that's what i thought when it's finished it will look something like this yeah but it's just a slow process i work with small tools i've got to I've got just your average box store tools. I don't have anything commercial grade, so it's just a slow process. And the shavings here, Patty beds the chicken houses with them. Yeah, see, there we go. He brought me a bunch yesterday, so. And, uh, all the scrap wood we have, it don't go to waste. It, it, we make kindling out of it because we burn wood to heat the house, so we, uh, it goes to make kindling out of it, start a fire with. Yes. 
And for those in uh, that follow Appalachia, and you've heard stories about chestnut wood and chestnut wood, and everybody loves chestnut wood. <coughs> this barn is mostly built out of chestnut. It was built in 1923, about the time a chestnut started dying. And if anybody is interested in what a chestnut bark looked like, this is a chestnut. This is a chestnut support right here. And that is where that's chestnut bark. Now when this barn was built, the chestnut was not wormy. It got wormy over time. But I I need the wood the bob building a lot more than I need the barn. And uh well, I need to build it a lot more than I need the wood. wood. Yes. Uh, yeah. I was wondering, okay, no, I he's not tearing down. my barn down. <laughs> but this is a, But there's every kind of pole in here. Most of them are chestnut, but I've I've seen a few locusts and this here is a black birch. Which I've not seen a black birch tree in forever, but this is black birch. If you saw this if you split that, it would be kind of a, it would be kind of a really, really, really dark gray. Huh. Would it be as inside. damaging? Was it? Would it be as um, damaging to breathe as the walnut when you're cutting it? I was told by a doctor that the darker the wood, the more toxic it is. Yeah. So any of you and woodworkers out there, be aware that to protect your lungs when you're woodworking, if you're working with those dark woods. But I've got to, this is the rest of my wormy white oak and piled up behind that old hay conveyor is cherry wood that I would really love to sell to somebody. Yeah, well, we need Because to... I'm not a fan of cherry wood. It's beautiful, but I don't like working with it. And that's our dry, that was the last time I checked it, it was about 12% moisture. Yeah. And, uh, and Aaron doesn't do so much with dimensional lumber. He mostly works with... Um, he art. prefers live edge stuff. Yeah, live edge. And now Huey built this bookshelf for Aiden years and years and years ago. Aiden was probably 11 or 12 years old. And we're just... Um, we, need to, we need to take some of the furniture that we have in our house to... Um, but the thing about working with wood, when you get it down thin, it'll cut. And this is not anywhere close to the heart. And it, 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 it cut pretty good, but it's just going to be a panel for the door. We're going to make what I was always told was a farmhouse type door, which has your rails and styles and then an insert. So I worked this down to a quarter inch. You're going to build it the same style as the Hoosier, right? That's farmhouse style. Swap. Okay. Yeah, I'll it's show you. What, uh, I'll show you the Hoosier. Let's walk back up there, and I will show you the Hoosier. You heading up, or are you hanging out down well, here? I have a, I have a, a simple router table, and I have a rail and a style router bits. So I'm going to attempt. I've never used them. I've had them probably for 20 years, and I've never used them. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to attempt to use a rail and a style router bits to do what I need to do for this. Hmm. Before this, I had just done the lap joint, which is really easy to do. But I don't do anything fast. I work with, I work with just uh, box store tools like the planer, my planer and sander and I was just craftsman and routers are craftsmen, so it has served me well. Yep. But you got to remember, you just have to take your time. My brother built this this great. But no, he didn't build it. He he took it out of a building. He tore yeah. it down. But he gave this to us years ago, and this is what we heated our entire house with in Canton. Our, our and it was a a ranch style. We had it sitting in the basement. And the wood, the floors upstairs were hardwood, and it just heated the hardwood floors enough to keep everything upstairs warm. And I had my grow room, my growing area downstairs. 
uh, in the basement and it kept it so warm down there that um, I didn't have to have heat blankets or anything or heat mats to grow and I grew lots and lots and lots of wonderful bedding plants there. See what's left of that hay bale I put out yesterday. Uh huh. Yes, Huey. Huey brought them a fresh hay bale yesterday out of a, the field across the road at, behind Chelsea's. Yeah, it's pretty it's much gone. gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> yep, oh, yeah. yeah. First time in my life that I ever rolled hay in November. And, uh, <laughs> It's, well, we've had an exceptionally dry year and the pasture is just not growing. And instead of building fence and moving cows over here to Chelsea's, I went ahead and mowed it and rolled it. And this was too green to trying to save. It was, it was up in the shade of the woods and it was almost as green as it was the day I cut it. So I got it rolled up and I didn't even, I just brought it over here in the hay baler and dumped it out. And that was yesterday afternoon about three o'clock and that was about a 500 pound bale. <laughs> so they've, uh, they've enjoyed theirself. Fat shows, fat shows. You don't take pictures of that while you're down here and list it back. I want rid of it. No, I'm going to, I'll come down and do that in a minute. All right. Um, I am going to go show them your Hoosier while we're talking about okay, the kitchen yeah. cabinets. All right. We'll see you in a bit, Pops. Thank you. All right. I'll be up in a minute. All right. I got to stack my wood. Right, go stack your wood. <clears throat> All right. He finally got his water ditch built. I guess I could have shown you that. They were having trouble ha with the grade and the grade couldn't be off more than an inch or two because it would build an air bubble and keep it from siphoning correctly. So it needed to be perfect because this is one of his, his main watering troughs. And as you can see, it's working perfectly. So that job is done that was a big job and it has been an off and on job for the last couple of years as they've had issues develop and air bubbles happen and whatever whatever but he and uh, his cousin john finally got it just perfected so now we shouldn't have any more problems with with the grade or with the air bubbles Yay. Leaves still falling. This spring, I'm thinking I will probably just clean this off and scatter wildflowers down through here. Of course, there's plenty of wildflowers that have scattered themselves, I'm sure. But I'd like to have uh, have some pretty ones in there too. I have seed for butterfly weed and um, echinacea. Of course, that's not wildflower, but I think it'd still be pretty grown right here. It's great for pollinators and amaranth. Have lots of amaranth seed. And up there's the garden. Or it was the garden this past year. Right now, it's fixing to be um, winter pasture. I think Hugh has them closed out of there right now. But he sewed it down in winter rye. I'm walking up a slight incline. I don't know if you can tell that. You can tell it by my, <laughs> my gasping for breath. But, oh well. 
it's getting better. I think, you know, I talked to y'all about the, um, the air purifier that we had bought last week, a week or two ago. And I think it's helping tremendously. So that really could have been a whole lot of what was, prob what was the problem with my lungs and my ability to catch my breath. So I think that it's improving. But now at this point, I'm gonna have to get out and get plenty of walking in. Leaves are all gone on my dogwoods. And that will be, um, it's incumbent on me now to spend time walking to improve my lung capacity. I think now I'm going to be able to do that. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. All right. Anyway, all right, I was just cleaning out my vacuum cleaner. Yeah, we still have a mess on the porch because we haven't started on the, the plant wall yet. But that is coming soon. All right, watch out for doggies. Here we come. There's one over there in the doorway. There's one in the pathway. I'm sure there's one in the bathroom floor. Where's everybody at? Yeah. There's one on the sofa. There's two over there in the corner. So, yeah, that means there's one in the bathroom. I haven't finished cleaning the kitchen up yet this morning. Oh, well. So, this is the Hoosier that Hugh built when we lived over in Canton. And it's a beautiful piece of furniture. Right now it's got stuff on it that doesn't need to be on it. Everything in this house kind of ends up, if it has a flat surface, it has stuff piled on it. And yeah, I could fuss all the time. But I choose not to. I just clean it off every now and then. And everything's dusty, so you just have to ignore the dust. But Hugh had always wanted to build a Hoosier. And look. <laughs> yeah, it's dusty. Um, and we were in a little antique store in Canton one day. And the lady happened to have this tabletop. And it goes all the way back to the back of this Hoosier. So when it was used in an actual Hoosier, it would have been pulled out. And this one hasn't been pulled out in a while, so. But anyway, I'm not gonna pull it all the way out, but you can see it would have been pulled out to give a big surface for working. It was kind of ingenious, simply because it allowed you know, not so much space to be taken up in a kitchen, but it also allowed a really nice working area when you needed it. So, I love my Hoosier. It needs to be oiled pretty desperately. But this is the style of kitchen cabinets that um, that he's going to build, or the doors for the kitchen cab style of doors he's going to build. And that will perfectly suit this old farmhouse. This farmhouse is 103 years old this year. So, anyway. And here's the last of the African violets that need to go into a bigger pot. But the, the ones that have gone into bigger pots are really to the point of needing to be propagated. <laughs> I have given African violets away to everybody. It, it's almost like... You know, in the in the summer, I don't know, in the summer when the squash and the zucchini start coming in, 
and everybody starts locking their their car doors <laughs> so that you can't put anything in them. And uh, yeah, it's to that point. Everybody's saying, oh no, there's Patty and she's got African violets. Everybody, don't let her know we're here. <laughs> All right, y'all. Oh, and I've got to oil the table. That's why my oil's sitting here. But uh, Hugh had also built this old farm table years and years and years ago. So it's desperately in need of uh, being, being oiled a bit. But I just thought I'd uh, let y'all know what's going on here. I'd mentioned that that we were going to be doing our kitchen. And I'm excited about it. Especially getting rid of, you know, these glass cabinets. My mother-in-law kept beautiful china and depression glass and all those sorts of things in there. With me, everything just stays greasy. And with Hugh, they get cracked and we haven't taken that one out to fix yet. And so they, I don't want to hide my, my stuff in the cabinets. I don't want everybody <laughs> to see it. So anyway, but he also did this for me yesterday, which I am so appreciative. This had, he extended, um, or he gave this piece of wood is deep enough now it wasn't nearly that deep, but it's deep enough now for me to scoot my orchids away from that cold glass in the winter. So, and it's very pretty. Nice job. Thank you, Hubie. So I keep him busy. My, my honey-do list is pretty intensely long, but so is his. I, yeah, that's, I was cleaning out the, the vacuum cleaner so I can vacuum up the dog hair. I do that every day, believe it or not. But when you have six doggies, yeah, you have lots of dog hair. All right, Bodie, where are you going, bud? Hmm? Where are you going? This silly old dude. He's 15, and he loves laying in the doorways. I think he's figured out that if he's in the doorway, every time somebody passes, they're going to reach down and pet him, because that's what you do. <laughs> Anyway, he's got it figured out. Folks, I love you. I will talk to you soon. You have a fabulous, beautiful day. Bye-bye.